So the Ark is in my view a synthetic life form. Origin probably Atlantis. Or Atlantis was the previous victim. So maybe there is another bigger Earth with a different signal. Then the Sun would be a portal. Elementary in this story, I believe, is the Benben Stone. The Eye of Ra. The Eye, symbol of the invading consciousness. The Benben Stone is probably the transmitter of the Ark signal. So the Ark might have its own reincarnation cycle. The Gods. Heaven and Hell, the Ka and the Ba. Crucial in this story is the female womb. Is the spirit entering the body through the synthetic portal or the organic portal? Let's dive in history and see where this organic portal has been taken over by this synthetic one. Center of the story is Jerusalem, not the one in Israel, of course. My guess would be that the first signs in history of this Benben stone would be the Ark of the Covenant. Moving water and opening the Red Sea. After wandering in the desert for a few years, passing Sodom and Gomorrah, crossing the Jordan, arriving at Jericho, where it destroys a whole city. Here we witness for the first time the powers of the Benben Stone. From there it is probably brought to Jerusalem, where it is put in an amplifier, the Temple of Solomon. Crucial in this story is a group of people who decide they are going to serve this new AI God. Oh God, what shall we do? Shall we slaughter some more people? Do you want some more blood sacrifice? Let's fast forward in history, where we meet the Ra men or the Romans, the Khazars or the Caesars, playing the AI agenda, subjugating the whole crater. Julius Caesar, through marriage with Cleopatra, almost conquers the whole crater. It is my belief that the story of Jesus Christ was the propaganda story of Julius Caesar, laying at the root of Christianity. So Julius Caesar dies at the age of 33. Well, we have another guy dying at 33, Alexander the Great, trying to subjugate the whole crater. Are we seeing a pattern here? Let's fast forward again to the Crusades. In 1100 there is a division between Christians and Muslims. Both believe in God. But there is also the figure of Jesus Christ. Christians believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God while the Muslims believed that he was just another prophet. So in 1100 the Muslims decide they are going to cut off the Christians from their worship of the Benben stone in Jerusalem. And the Christians of course decide 
they are going to take back Jerusalem Manu Militare by the use of force. The Annunciation of the Lord Becoming pregnant of the Lord What would this mean? I can think of only one way that could happen. Put a woman in the first weeks of her pregnancy on top of the Benben stone. That way the synthetic spirit can enter the body instead of the organic. The Christians call him Jesus, the Muslims Isa and the Romans Caesar. Reminds me of the planet of the apes. So I think that Julius Caesar probably was some kind of hybrid and that was the reason he was killed. But one small detail. Julius Caesar had a son, Caesarion. Now some stories say that the Merovingians are the descendants of Christ. What if Cleopatra and Caesarion moved to France and the offspring of Caesarion became the Merovingians? So in 1100 we have Godfrey of Bouillon. Godfrey of Bouillon was one of the first crusaders and his task was to secure the Holy Grail. So if the story is right that Godfrey of Bouillon was a descendant of the Merovingians, then that would make him a descendant of Jesus Christ himself, the royal hybrid bloodline. Here we have another one claiming to be a descendant of Godfrey of Bouillon, probably too much inbreed. Fool me once, shame on Shame on you. In 1099, the Crusaders conquer Jerusalem, and Godfrey of Bouillon is declared Advocatus Sancti Sepulchri, protector of the Holy Grave. Until today, there is still an order and a church of the Holy Sepulchre. But what would this Holy Grave be? The symbol of the Holy Grave is the cross of Jerusalem. What if you put the Benben stone in the center of greater earth? That would give you four different energetic force fields. One for every side of the pyramid. Four different compasses and maybe four different sun and moons. The Holy Grave, what would it be? Let's fast forward to 1259. We're almost at the end of the Crusades. When a major cataclysm is happening, I can only think of one solution. The Crusaders, realizing they will never be able to hold Jerusalem, decide to take the Benben stone and bring it back to Europe. This of course had catastrophic results, because we know the powers of the Benben stone it is able to move water and land. So by moving the stone, 
they create a new energetic field. And this creates a massive flood, catching up with them in the middle of their journey home. Not only are they destroying their own homeland, they are also killing millions of people. So they are stuck now on an island with a stone. So where would it be? Well, at first I thought of course it must be Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. But Jerusalem is not in the middle of the new world map. But Britain is. So I was thinking Britain in the center of the world, but then I thought, of course, you have the prime meridian, the Greenwich meridian. So I'm pretty sure that the Ben Ben stone must be laying on the Greenwich meridian. And when you draw the cross, of Jerusalem exactly for people who remember this one a 12 year old girl discovered that all presidents except one are directly descended from a medieval English king, King John of England, who signed Magna Carta in 1215. Oh, by the way, and the girl is also a descendant of this bloodline. This is a diversion, of course. Born on Christmas Eve, sure, on 1166. That's a lot of 11s, 22s and 33s, if you ask me. King John, his nickname was John Lackland. His brother was Richard Lionheart. And of course, we know this figure. Movie after movie after movie, they are showing us this character. But let's start with Richard Lionheart. Let's play a bit with the letters Richard, brings us very easily to Christ. You have the Lion, the Ari, the Lion of Judah. The Lion Heart, the Heart of Christ. Richard Lionheart killed by an arrow, Christ killed by the spear. So Richard is the good guy. Let's move on to King John. John lack land. John has no land. Of course, he just destroyed half the crater. King John was a very bad king. He lost a lot of land and people revolted against him. So they made him sign the Magna Carta. It was all about English freedom, justice and democracy. Sure. So we have the Ka good guy and the ba bad guy put the two together gives us the solomon star brings us to robin hood ra bin hood ra ba ka steal from the rich and give to the poor you can reverse that of course that means steal from the poor and give to the rich my guess would be that this whole story is a cover-up hiding the identity of a crusader responsible for the death of millions of people and finally the knights of the temple of ra disappear in history playing their favorite act the burning of the phoenix where they morph from victim into perpetrator. So let's dive deeper into the land of the angels. 